Alright, so last year in 2022, I did Around the Bay, the classic. 210 kilometers ish around Port Phillip Bay. A 45 kilogram bike, and 12 hours 29.43 including the ferry, 10.45.56 without it. Surely I can do better than this. Given how much I carried and didn't use, there's some serious weight savings to be had, and that also goes for me as well as the bike. So first up, one inner tube not two, keeping the pump, but 25 gram CO2 cartridges instead of 16, which means we can do a whole tire with one cartridge. Patches, tire levers, and this thing which replaces all the Allen keys and the chain tool. Still need the spanner, but this is much less than last time. So I picked up running, starting with couch to 5k, then going to park run every week, steadily improving as I went, and this definitely made a bigger difference than just doing more riding. In addition to that, I also got myself a non-electric bike, and started riding that. Not quite as far, but really, not actually slower. There's a video on that one coming later. But I am still going to take the e-bike on around the bay this year. Okay, maybe next year I'll do it on the road bike. Now this year, rather than carrying four Bosch batteries, I'm going to use another pack to charge one of them at the halfway point. I'll borrow the pack we use for amateur radio purposes, and then we just need something to get the charge out of this into the e-bike's battery. I'm going to base this around a Rui Deng DPH5005. This is pretty similar to the DPS 5015 and 5020 units that we have, that take in 48 volts and step it down to lower voltages for the workbench power supply. Fortunately, a lot of the work here has actually already been done by others, in particular Chris from the channel Serendipity Sue. It turns out that despite the battery and the bike having a two-way CAN bus cryptographic handshake to ensure the bike's a genuine Bosch bike before the battery turns on, and the battery's a genuine Bosch battery before the motor turns on, the charging it, on the other hand, is actually dead simple. 5 volts into this side and the BMS turns on. Then we just put 42 volts in that side, current limited to a maximum of 6 amps, the standard charge is limited to 4, but there is a fast charger that'll do 6. So why'd I pick a DPH5005? It's different from the DPS series in one important way. Instead of being purely a buck converter, it's buck boost. This means that it can step the output voltage up in addition to down. We need this because the output voltage goes from being lower than the input to higher than the input as the input gets flatter and the output fuller. Only 5 amps of output current is less, but it's still enough. There is, however, a 10 amp input current limit, so we can't use this battery how it's currently wired up to put out 12 volts, as we'd be limited to about 3 amps out in that case. So we'll have to wire them in series, more volts gives us less amps for the same wattage. But this one's actually an entirely different battery chemistry. It's lithium ion phosphate, and we end up with 12 cells in series, compared to the 10 lithium ions in series in the Bosch battery. These of course have a different voltage, slightly lower than lithium ion, so we're looking at 43.8 fully charged, about 38 nominal, and about 30 when empty. So let's test this thing out, using a glass of salt water as a ballast. And I should probably stop that because it's emitting some nice chlorine gas and doing some interesting chemistry with all the other trace minerals in that salt. Well, it's not pink because of its purity, I'll say that. In theory, we're good to go here, so next up I just need to put the batteries in something that will protect them. I'm not just going to throw three soft case packs in a bag and call it a day. Being lithium ion phosphate, they're not anywhere near as explosive as lithium ion packs, but I still don't want to damage them. So I've got this parts tray from Bunnings, which will need the dividers removed. Okay, so I could have 3D printed a case here, but that's a hell of a lot of plastic. And this parts tray actually turned out to be almost exactly the perfect size. That done, I give it some spaces to support the other side of the lid and tape the whole thing on. Now as for the Ruiding board, that's getting a 3D printed enclosure. It's being printed in PLA, which is easy mode, but a print this big would be a major pain in ABS, especially with the printer outside. Hopefully the enclosure doesn't melt. So after some minor refitting... I said, after some minor refitting... After some not so minor refitting, the display is installed and then the board goes in. Now we just need a cable for the battery. 
What takes about 10 amps is fairly tough and has three wires in it already. I'm using Chris's 3D printed Bosch battery plug. It uses crimp on spade terminals which I've thickened up a little with some solder so that they stay in the battery connector better. And now to just wire the whole thing up. No, of course I cut the plug off. For the 5 volt end I'm using a Pololu D36V6F5 which supplies 5 volts at 600 milliamps. I've actually seen another design which uses a zener and a resistor to supply the 5 volt side so I don't think it needs much current there, although I haven't actually measured this. I designed and printed my own back panel rather than using the original from that case as here I just want two holes for cable grommets. And now I need to redo that XT90 cable as it wasn't quite long enough. So, now it's time for a very scary test. Is this how I explode a thousand dollar Bosch battery? And if I did blow it up, could I even get another one in time? Would I even end up spending a grand on another one? Well, I'm picking the lesser of the two to risk for a reason. Alright, so connector in and five volts on, the BMS wakes up and displays the battery level. Looks good so far, nothing's emitting smoke. Turn the 42 volts on with the current limit set to 4.8 amps. Flashing light indicates it's charging. Though the input voltage is dropping rapidly. That got down to 30 volts a lot quicker than I thought it would. Was this flat before I started? Okay, it appears we've put 8.2 amp hours into this one. Yeah, it was. A little bit too long left in storage. A further test with it fully charged achieved much better results and all was good. It was charged up again and ready to go. Now, was it about this point that everything seemed like it was coming together? Spending a bit of time in Adelaide, I did a ride up the Crafers Bikeway, a 100 km loop around Adelaide, walked up Waterfall Gully to Mount Lofty, and ran a 25 minute 40 second 5 km at Park Run, a significant improvement on my personal best. Then, it all started going wrong. Back to Melbourne with a slightly sore knee, Nothing seemingly out of the ordinary, but it was persistent. Doing a park run, it turned into a sharp stabbing pain at the 4km mark, and then after crossing the finish line I could barely walk. I gave up on the running for the time being and walked park run instead. It was only getting worse. So I saw a physio and after several rounds of, does this hurt? How about this? What about here? He figured out the problem. Patella tracking. Your kneecaps effectively attach to four different muscles, and the vastus lateralis and vastus medialis attach to it on the left and right. Basically, one's grown quicker than the other, so my kneecap is getting pulled to the left. But the solution is apparently very simple. Exercises to build that muscle up, but in the short term, tape. It doesn't take much, just stick some tape on here, pull the skin to one side, and that's enough pressure to keep the kneecap from rubbing where it shouldn't. That said, I'm going to need to bring a roll of it with me, but I guess I can just take the duct tape out of the kit, right? There's also another problem we've got at the moment. The balcony has had to be cleared for repair work to begin, and now I've got no workbench. But I think I've already done everything that needed that. So a bit of minor maintenance to be done on the bike. Wait, what the... This is probably enough to replace the rim strip on every single bike that is still running 27 by one and a quarter in the entire state. New hand grips go on. These are ODI Ruffian mountain bike grips. Closest match I can find for the original Gazelle ones. A new seat goes on as well. It's a bit wider and more cushioned than the kind you'd have on a road bike. Due to the more upright position of the rider, the fact they'll be pedaling sitting down a lot more and the frame being brutally stiff. The split in the center reduces pressure on, well, you know what, making it a lot more comfortable on long rides. The rear brake seems passable, but the front definitely needs a new brake pad after what I did in Adelaide. Saturday, the day before around the bay, there's two things I need to do. It's fit nicely in here. Ah, the Dutch roundabout. Interesting. Controversial, but safer, provided people understand how to use it. Thank you. 
Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> First one's done, now we just need to get all the gear on the bike. I'd like it to look less like a bike packing setup than last year. No rear bag and cargo straps instead. Now to work out what goes where. I pick out some gels and put them in the middle bag. Having had more experience with this lot, they're certainly better than the ones I had last year. Actually, I changed my mind on things a little. I put the seat post mounted bottle holder back on, which I didn't previously have fitted because it gets in the way of the rear bag. I didn't want to have the bottle on a gear strap, so that means the gear strap's now holding the charger on, and it's not sideways. And putting the race number plate on the front, it covers my secondary front light. Alright, no point taking the battery for that then, but also no point having the GoPro charger that was also going to run off it, saving even more weight. So the goal is clear, beat last year's time. The bike's got two less batteries weighing it down, making it 10 kilograms lighter. I'm 7 kilograms lighter and I'm more fit than last time. Join us next time for the actual ride. Until then, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and see you then.